smoking chimneys, a symbol of industrial development and environmental pollution. Coal burning is still an important component of our energy supply. Even today, the enormous pollution of the environment is an immense challenge science still faces. Erwin Appel is a geophysicist and studies the environmental contamination of soils and sediments. In order to detect the pollutants, he uses a new measurement method where it is necessary to search for pollutants that can be detected with the help of magnetism. There was a standard textbook called Environmental Magnetism. That book inspired many scientists to use magnetic properties to test various environmental issues. You measure magnetic particles which are related to the same source and the same transportation channel as the pollutant. That means that pollutants and magnetic particles often have a common origin. Scientists use this relationship to find the pollutant using new methods and instruments. Erwin Appel's team are preparing themselves for a field excursion. A final check of the instruments in the workshop. Everything OK. The sensor works perfectly. What is very well known is the link to heavy metals, which originate from combustion processes, are discharged via chimneys and then transported into the atmosphere before finally being deposited in soils. The magnetic methods will hopefully lead to less work in a different field, pollutant analysis. Analyzing soil samples is an extremely intricate job. In order to dissolve the heavy metals, strong acids are used in the laboratory. Subsequently, the solution is separated from the sample. The heavy metals remain in the liquid. Finally, in this liquid, the pollutants are then measured with modern instruments. The largest workload, however, is not the measuring. The most time-consuming part of the analysis is, uh, is not the analysis, it's the sample preparation. So we have to dry, to sieve, to grind the sample, and then we have to digest the sample. So this takes much more time, I think, about 90% of the whole uh, analysis. This effort should be worthwhile. The new instruments that use magnetism are deployed directly in the field. The target of the geoscientists is a highly contaminated area in eastern Germany, the region around the so-called Schwarze Pumpe. Fifty years of heavy industry have left their mark. The Schwarze Pumpe is a traditional brown coal industrial site with open cast mining, a curse and a blessing at the same time. Although this site provides jobs for many people, it used to be an enormous source of pollutants. There was always a cloud of dust. And then it wasn't just the cloud coming from the power station. The briquette cloud was just as bad. If you look what's coming out of the briquette factory now, it's pure white. But then it was really black. For example, the women living to the east of the factory, when there was a strong wind from the west, couldn't hang up the washing. And when the wind came from the southwest, the ones living to the northeast couldn't hang up their washing. And everyone knew that very well. The 1990s, knockdown of the outdated industries. However, the demolition did not mean that the times were over. A new modern brown coal power station was built. The emissions today? Steam and carbon dioxide. The fly ashes are retained in the giant power station. New factories have opened on the grounds. Dust emissions now belong to the past. 
However, here and there remains from the past can still be seen, and the invisible traces are spread over large parts of the grounds. The region around the Schwarze Pumpe is therefore an ideal test area for the new methods used by the environmental scientists. They want to find out how the pollutants have spread. The scientists test the surface sensor where factories once stood. So, well, here we are. Yeah. Let's get the equipment and let's start measuring. Okay. <laughs> 385, 566, 511, 625. And they really do measure high amounts of magnetism. However, near the factories this could also be due to rubble from crumbling buildings. The real strength of the sensor can be seen in areas where at first no pollutants are expected. 423, 457, okay, 420. They also find high magnetic values on the surface in the nearby forest areas, a clear indicator that heavy metals could have accumulated here too. 92, 94. You can very quickly get an overview about the regional distribution of the magnetic properties and hence also about potential contamination. More accurate conclusions can be drawn if you take vertical profiles. With these you can, for example, see the influence of the geogenic background or possible later influences through man-made interferences. Therefore, vertical profiles of the top half meter are especially important in order to detect industrial contamination. For this reason, the scientists drill into the ground. The industrial fly ash should have accumulated in the top layers of the ground. And fly ash contains two things, magnetic particles as well as heavy metals. Now the sensor for the vertical profile is being prepared. Everything okay? Okay. Good. The sensor is fed into the drilled hole to examine underground millimeter by millimeter. Okay. okay. The signal is transmitted directly to a computer. Good. The result is clear. It looks good. It was clear. And in about 10 centimeters we have a very strong peak of magnetic material. Yeah. So finished. A clear indication that heavy metals may also have accumulated here. The scientists want to confirm their suspicion and decide to take a sample of the ground. Yes. And we will take a sample for laboratory analysis from that. Yeah. I will just cut this off and then we fill it into the glass. Okay. Hence, the time-consuming chemical analysis is utilized when the magnetic measurements indicate that it is very likely to be worthwhile. With this procedure, the magnetic particles are used as proxies for the heavy metals. The environmental scientists finish their field excursion. In their luggage, they have the regional distribution of the magnetism and soil samples for the laboratory. To summarize, they are analyzing the following scenario. The coal industry discharged large amounts of ball-shaped fly ash into the atmosphere. Fly ash contains both heavy metals and magnetic particles. The fly ash spreads over large areas and slowly accumulates in the ground. Without prior knowledge of the contamination in the region, you need to take many samples. However, if you carry out a magnetic analysis first, it is possible to better target the measurement point and hence reduce the number of samples needed. You don't get an accurate picture of the contamination with heavy metals, but you obtain an idea of what the regional contamination could be. With the results from the magnetic analysis, it is possible to target the points from which to take chemical samples. In the vertical profiles you see that here it's also...
Therefore, the new exploration method does not replace the chemical analysis. Instead, it points to where it is worthwhile to take samples, a strong combination. Magnetism and chemical analysis combined with each other reduce the number of chemical analyses. There is an additional cost due to the magnetic analysis, but it is still more cost efficient than only carrying out chemical analyses on a higher number of samples. The Federal Environment Agency in Dessau has been studying the problems related with contaminated soils for several years. So far, a quarter of the areas in Germany in which contamination is suspected have been analysed. For many areas such an analysis is still pending. Therefore, a need for efficient exploration methods really does exist. I really see a market for supplementary analysis. I think that we need new methods for widespread contaminated areas and I think that such methods will soon establish themselves and prove their worth in the market if the costs and precision of their predictions are considered. For example, the distribution of fly ash is a highly relevant issue, especially when related to the combustion of fossil fuels. In many cases, the filters were switched off at night, leading to higher concentrations in the vicinity of such industrial sites. The magnetic sensors can also detect industrial discharges of contaminated wastewater into rivers and lakes. By now, the new methods and instruments have proven their usefulness as environmental detectives. 125, 104, 123. An environmental problem is not immediately solved once detected, but one thing is sure. The improvement of the environmental quality starts with better exploration methods. <laughs>